Hey there, I'm Greg Finn. And I'm Jess Budd. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock here on August 16th, 2019. Remember, you can catch our famous Friday news shows each and every Friday morning. We read all the news. So you don't have to. And if you want to follow along with us, just check out our show notes. Head over to marketingoclock.com for all the links from today's articles. And please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Jess, what's in the news this week? Lots of stuff in the news this week. And first up, something I feel like wasn't too long ago that we touched on, and we're back to talk about it again. So in June, we reported on JumpShot's findings on zero-click searches in Google from Q1 of 2019. And we have updated numbers here, because we're now in what? I don't even know what Q it is, three? <laughs> should, we be, should we be excited for the updated numbers? Or worried? Um, we should always be excited to have more data. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good answer. How's that? <laughs> so <laughs> to define again what a zero-click search is for our listeners that maybe didn't catch it last time we talked about this, these are any searches where the results did not lead to a click from the searcher. So there's a bunch of different ways that can happen, whether, you know, ideally the searcher got what they were looking for and left, or maybe they were interrupted or the search returned no results, but probably mostly the the first one there. Searchers just saw what they needed in the search results and abandoned ship. So those zero-click searches back in Q1 of 2019, the number was a whopping 48.96%, which is pretty significant. Which is a lot, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. So buckle up because... (laughs) Perfect. Buckled in. <laughs> You're strapped in. <laughs> so uh, Rand Fishkin over at Spark Toro released an updated version of the numbers this week. And like I said, buckle up because less than half of Google searches now result in a click. And that is the title of the article if you're following along in the show notes. I will say it again. Less than half of Google searches now result in a click. And that's according to JumpShot. Again, they went through the data. That is specifically from June of 2019. If you look at all of Q2, it's still a little bit under half, but in June is when they actually hit that halfway mark, which is crazy pants. So it's 50.33% of the searches performed on desktop and mobile devices across the U.S. Okay, so it went up a a percent and a few few basis points. Yeah. Essentially. Okay. over half. So this is concerning for site owners, obviously, because we all want, you know, traffic coming from search that's ideal i think for most people wouldn't you say ideal for most people except for one big company that starts with a g yeah that would well, let me guess uh google i, I was thinking greg corp <laughs> <laughs> our, our servers just can't handle it <laughs> well greg corp if you follow their lead you might be in trouble with the government I, I shouldn't say in trouble but the government is looking into whether a monopoly is quote potentially abusing its market dominance in one field to unfairly compete in another and that's interesting because they are you know Looking at this from a perspective of Google's market share on searches that are going on, and and poor DuckDuckGo, I don't have it in front of me, but they got like 0.4% of all searches performed. I'm back on the DuckDuckGo DuckDuckGo. (laughs) You are? I'm back. DDG for all. DD. Oh, DuckDuckGo. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag. I just got the tattoo last week. (laughs) Ooh, I'd like to see that. We should put it in the show notes. Just kidding. It's not real. But the interesting thing too, and we'll we'll talk about the the congressional panel in a second because I have something interesting to read. But if you remember back when we talked about this in June, the numbers were of the searches that were leading to a click, still 12% of those search clicks were going to a property that was owned by Alphabet, which is Google's Mm -hmm. parent company. So, you know, maps or even Google images, things like that. That's a pretty significant portion of clicks in search going from Google to a Google-owned property. So that tidbit aside, back in July, a United States congressional panel asked Google some very direct questions with, I kid you not, literal check boxes for yes or no. <laughs> they wanted a response from Google. <laughs> I mean, that's like elementary Was school. Was there a recapture on those checkboxes yeah. or no? <laughs> I am a human. Well, Google found one of those to, quote, not be susceptible of check the box answers. So I'm going to read the question and then I'm going to read Google's answer and then we'll, we'll just leave it there for a second to marinate. 
So one of these yes or no questions from the congressional panel said, of the total U.S. mobile and desktop searches that occur on Google search, is it true that less than 50% result in clicks to non-Google websites? Yes or no, right? That's what they wanted. Just a yes or no. Correct. Yeah. Google didn't answer that. <laughs> Here's what they said. This is a direct quote. The author of the report cited in your letter did not make his specific methodology clear, but it's inaccurate to portray featured snippets as simply answering a question and never resulting in a click. Many sites strive to have their content highlighted as a snippet, which can drive meaningful traffic to their sites. With fairy dust? <laughs> like, <Right>. Just have <laughs> clicks? <laughs> Wait, it's just, just branding? I guess. But, I mean, they, regardless of what that means, they did not answer the question. Right. And that's how you know that the answer is bad. <laughs> Where you know, when it's somebody up there and you're like, no offense, but you know you're getting offense. Right. Coming next. Exactly. You can't and, start something like that. And when you ask a yes or no question and then you immediately tangent off and juke one way, jive the next way, mm -hmm. you know the answer. Right. I know what the answer is. The answer is no. It's got to be. Of course, they never checked a box, so we'll never know. So that's a whole thing, and I feel like this won't be the last that we hear from this saga. But as far as trends that they outlined in the article, because, again, they did update the numbers, um, it's pretty similar to what we saw back in Episode 75 in June, but a little bit more pronounced here as the year progresses. Paid clicks are on the rise. That's clicks to paid ads. Zero clicks are results again on the rise organic is the thing that's dipping and all of this is especially prominent or clear on mobile versus desktop desktops still trending in this direction but the i mean the lines are almost flat on the chart but on mobile you really really see some of these differences so definitely check out the full report from spark toro there's a lot of good info in there especially if you read the last one this is a good update but Man. And I think you meant the answer was yes. You said that Wait. the answer was no. Oh, here's yeah, what the did question. I say? Of the total U.S. mobile and desktop mm. searches that occur on Google search, is it true that less than 50% result in clicks to non Google websites? Yes. I meant yes. That's what you think. Okay. Yeah. So if they have to ask you the question, <laughs> that's going to be your very unformed response. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the panel should be reading this article here, actually. Hopefully they're listening. Do you think Congress listens to us? I mean, I know. I know so. <laughs> I know so. All right. Next up, we are going to keep it on the Google side from a tweet from Google Webmasters at Google WMC, formerly Webmaster Central, never changed the Twitter handle. And what they said is, we've been asked if third parties can host content in subdomains or subfolders of another's domain, it is not against our guidelines. But as the practice has grown, our systems are being improved to better know when such content is independent of the main site and treat accordingly. Overall, we'd recommend against letting others use subdomains or subfolders with content presented as if it is part of the main site without close supervision or the involvement of the primary site. All that to say, Google is saying you can syndicate content, mm -hmm. you can come in and rent this. It is not inherently against guidelines, but they'll 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 find you if that's the case. That's <laughs> basically what they're you. saying. The yeah. TLDR, that's what it is. My question here is. Let's. I'm going to go back to last week's take of the week. Mm. How come you can't do this with links? Excellent you can question. go in and you can find if a certain subdirectory is leased out to somebody, but you can't do this with links. Hmm. I don't really believe you. <laughs> That's it's like, I get maybe some of the super egregious things. You have some subdomains, and that'll raise red flags. Mm -hmm. You've got subdirectories. I, and that's just basically a folder. So it'd be marketing clock forward slash awesome forward slash. <laughs> I want that folder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So that came out. And then, of course, what people thought of is well, there's a lot of different sites out there that use these the subdomains. So mm -hmm. let's say you're a WordPress or you're a blog spot. Many times, again, it is awesome blog at wordpress.com. And so I re-jumped on that and saying, well, is this going to be the case? Do we, is there going to be issues with it? Uh, and Danny Sullivan using his at Danny Sullivan Twitter handle said, no, in cases like that, it's 
typically pretty clear that someone's individual blog is actually their blog, not that it's part of some other site. So I guess for the bigger sites, do that. If you're going with some <laughs> startup or something on your own, it may be less clear. Mm -hmm. So again, do hopefully this is good that Google can find, find this out. I'm just not buying it. So you're just, you don't buy which part of it then? No, no. What I'm saying is that when people are participating in many of these spamming activities, generally speaking, it's because it works. <laughs> it's not a causational <laughs> yeah. thing. It's more correl uh, correlative. So seeing people taking this approach in general, hopping onto a domain, and then expecting that Google is going to find that, if somebody does something well, I think it might be harder than they presume it could be. And that is what I'm was that is what I'm saying. I get it. Gotcha. Some of the sub subdomain stuff is a little easier to sniff out, but you just have somebody's folder and you have access to that on a site. That's pretty hard to figure out if it's if you are performing that well. And again, it's not against their guidelines, they're saying. Right. Which is strange. Right. That you can well, go out there and you can do what you want. Then you put a link there. Is that against the guidelines? Because you're manipulating links. Dun, that's dun, why dun. I don't know how it works. <laughs> and then that's where it gets confusing. But again, that is not against their guidelines if you are participating in that or doing so on behalf of a client. Just be safe with it. Because what we don't want is spam. And right. one of the funny things <laughs> is I was looking at these tweets about this potential spam issue on Twitter. Nothing but spam in the comments. Of course. Very unsavory spam. Mm, that's, I'm going to have to check that out. every single response. <laughs> I'm like, this, is, this is perfect. It's, well, it's and, kind of beautiful. You, you forget how poor Twitter's spam filters really are or savoriness <laughs> filters really are. <laughs> right. I like how you put that. And Engage the savoriness filter. Yeah, the savoriness filter. <laughs> uh, turn it off on, on this Google Webmaster <laughs> post. All right, and that brings us to this week's Take of the Week. This take is a saucy hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. And this week's take comes from Cyrus Shepard, at Cyrus Shepard on Twitter. And Cyrus said, Google is such a great company, they've never been hurt by a major algorithm update. Emoji chart going up. Maps. YouTube, fights, I think he meant flights. I think so. Shopping, and more win almost every time. Parentheses, and the ads department is on emoji fire. <laughs> <laughs> A testament to the great content, really. Are we, are we talking about it or are we I'm leaving not it there? I'm talking about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about it. Just, I think you're just being, uh, being honest there. Yep. No, no sarcasm. Nope. But that That's was this cute. week's take of the week. Thanks, Cyrus. <laughs> yes, right. thank you. And that brings us to this week's lightning round. Pew, pew. At this point in the show, we split up our content into two parts, paid and... Non-paid. I cover everything to do with advertising, a.k.a. paid, and Greg covers the organic or... Non-paid. So here's what's happening in the paid universe this week. Our first story here is from Tom Waddington. That's at Tom Waddington 8 on Twitter because 1 through 7 were apparently taken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> oh, burn. <laughs> Take it a week. I don't know. Maybe that's Runner his favorite up number. Over here. Yeah, right? <laughs> Anyway, he noted that there's a new badge for folks that are running Google local services ads. So lawyers, realtors, and financial planners can now go through a process to show up as Google screened, and it will say that with a little green check mark right in their ads. There's some pretty stringent criteria for this. If you want it, you have to be professionally licensed and go through not only a personal, but also a business background check and have at least a three-star rating to get this. So it's pretty, I mean, that's, you know, your Google screened, you've been screened. It is a screening process. I don't like this. You don't like it? Am, am I, am I jumping, stepping on something you're going to say here? No, I wasn't going to have an opinion on it really because oh, I've only seen it in the tweet. I haven't seen it live. The name screened, it does not appear clickable in the ads. I could not replicate things and see the Google screened. Hmm. I don't like it because screened is not that defined of a word. Are they FINRA screened? Are they screened as a fiduciary? How no, are they screened? Google screened. I know. Screened I, by Google. I get that. Yeah. But 
okay, so you have to have three stars. Okay, so, so somebody goes out and tells their family to bump them up to five stars. Now are they eligible to be Google screened? Do you look at, at their FINRA records? Like, what are you doing to screen somebody? And then you say somebody's Google screened. That appears to be a very big endorsement. If, if I was a financial advisor, I'd put Google screened on my business cards when I went out to people. Ooh. Why wouldn't you do that? I'm yeah. Google screened. Google screened. Check. That seems like an endorsement in some way to be Google screened if you can't click on that and find out what screen means. Yeah, I had to Google it, literally. It, it does not seem clear. And I want the exact definitions of what does not make the cut for Google screening and what does make the cut. Well, the muddier thing, too, is that, and I might be getting this wrong, but one of those three categories, and I'm pretty sure it was financial planners, they don't even have to have reviews, so they get past that three-star rating thing. They can right. still be screened and, and get a little check. So it's a little bit muddy, but I think the whole point of this was they were trying to come up with something against the Google guaranteed where they pay people back if they're not satisfied, but they don't do that here. It's just a, another thing, but yeah, Google screened. I don't know. I'm going to put that on my business card. <laughs> well, we got we to get screened. Some <laughs> the other issue I have with these services, and it's I, I whined about it, just to be completely blunt, mm. about Twitter verification, where it's closed yeah. now. And then as soon as you have something Google screened, it needs to be kept up because the minute you let people become Google screened and then you will delay or stop supporting it or slow at doing it or give people the runaround or are not upfront as to why people didn't get Google screened and let them fix something if there was an issue with the form, it becomes a big detriment. And I just don't like the fact that it looks like an endorsement and I just know how some things are not supported. Like Google Plus, when they launched that, the <laughs> support was horrific. They don't know how to support things well. Google Ads, horrific. Mm. Everything that they do, from uh, Google Drive, I accidentally paid for a professional extra subscription for something and tried to revert it back within like 15 minutes of doing it. The service is atrocious. Phones, it's it, they don't know they don't know how to deal with customers. And the fact that they're out there screening makes me nervous. Hmm. And I know this is a lightning round, no, but I had to get that off my chest. That, that was like lightning plus hashtag fire, an additional take. That was pretty good. And the thunder. <laughs> is that from something or is that just song. you being cool? Right? Oh, okay. I don't know. The thunder, wait, thunder rolls? I don't That's know. That's a thing. That's like a oh, Garth Brooks song, song, right? Where somebody says, and the thunder? Yeah, uh, Imagine Dragons. Oh. Oh. That's way more relevant than Garth Brooks, I think. I don't know. What are the kids listening to? <laughs> Who knows? Nicki Manjai, probably. Who? Lady Gaga? Uh, Nicki Manjai. <laughs> Hope, no? love, Hope loves these mispronunciations. Ariana Grande? <laughs> oh, I don't think she heard okay. you. She'd scream about that no. one. <laughs> All right. Next up. Google very quietly releases item ID targeting for smart shopping campaigns. This is from salesandorders.com. Their team picked up on the item ID as a filter option when they were setting up a campaign. They looked around for an announcement from this and couldn't really find one. I couldn't either. Apparently something was released in a newsletter though that explained it. Basically, if you're setting up a smart shopping campaign and you want to include or exclude certain products, there's many ways to do that, like category and, and other fields. But item ID is now an option. So it's handy. Yay. You know, yep, more believe, options are better than less. I believe it was active before for non-smart shopping specifically, but now it's smart now it's shopping. for smart so shopping. it was for shopping ads and now for smart shopping. Yeah. So yay. And you know who else is saying yay this week, Greg? Traumatic pause. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of something <laughs> tool fans yeah i mean we're all really happy because <laughs> of the whole spotify thing or any streaming service okay. right they're so not available right. you got it right yeah but what i was going to say and probably a lot of these cross over with tool fans but uh fantasy sports advertisers <laughs> i mean fans in the name pretty much nailed it right <laughs> nailed it <laughs> you're well i was going to say you're both but you're not a fantasy sports advertiser you're a user of it i mean i would have nailed it if it was a broad match guess Ooh, wow burn burn Thanks. hope's laughing her mic's not on <laughs> that was really good so google 
will announce this week that beginning this month, which we're halfway through, so soon, those who, quote, meet minimum creative requirements and, quote, hold state licenses where required will be allowed to promote their products in certain states. And we're talking again about fantasy sports advertisers. So that's really exciting. I love sports betting. Don't you? <laughs> I used to. I used to bet a lot legally in sports and go to Vegas, actually physically go to Vegas to, to place everything and send in the receipts and things. It's very, it, doing that is very scary. It seems you, like you a lot of work money too. Over and you get like a little slip and you have to hold on to the slip and, and I would do it for a season long things. Oh, you got to hold the slip hold that whole time. Little, it's like a receipt and you have to take it and try not to lose this thing. <laughs> it's crazy. And then funny story, you can't do it anymore. So we bought all the sports data and then used a Google predictive um, I forget the actual name of it, but we ran the sports data through and then put it in games um, coming up for the next week. And we'd have Google essentially choose the winner and what lines were soft and what and bet that way. And it, it did okay. And over more than 50%, but not much more. That's good, right? Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was like just enough to break even. Oh, well, and then some, I hope. No. Because we're holding on to that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Still doing the pod. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you can uh, you can now search for more ways to do your sports betting because it might show up with an ad, which yay team paid. So something else that Tool fans might be really into this week is a story from The Verge. Facebook movie ads will now include ticket and showtime details. So that's exciting for folks that are advertising that. Another cool thing that Facebook added was what they're calling premiere reminders. Wait, why do Tool fans like this? Because Tool fans like everything because they're cool. Tool fans don't go to movies. Probably not. <laughs> I just was looking for a segue. It was perfect. No. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Thank best, you. best segue ever. <laughs> Fun thing. Speaking of segues that are unrelated, I was watching a YouTube video today and it just auto played another video for me. And it happened to be a tool video, which was exciting because I forgot about the days when we used to have to listen to them on YouTube. So it's exciting. Anyway, that has nothing to do with Facebook movie ads. So yeah, they added this premiere reminders feature <laughs> in case you're not putting all of those movie release dates in your calendar which is good. The thing about this article though, was not even that announcement. Cause like, that's fine, but probably not a lot of people out there advertising movies. It was just interesting to me. There was a study done by Accenture that 58% of people discover movies online. And I just feel like that seems high, but it's probably not because nobody watches TV anymore. And I don't know how else you would learn about new movies. I if mean, not online on TV counts as probably everything, right? So you're on Twitter, you're doing right. all this stuff. And yeah. it shows up. I mean, what, what, what is offline b b TV, TV and radio Who has TV though? billboards. Billboards. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you know, but yeah, that's what I was thinking. It struck me as high when I first read it, but then I really thought about it and online's the entire internet. So I don't know, but I guess in your Facebook feed now you can get an ad that tells you all Factually about the new correct. movies. The entire internet. <laughs> the entire internet is online. <laughs> what was the last movie you saw in theaters? Do you care about this at all? I do. Yeah. Inception. <laughs> Whoa, that was a long time ago. Yes, and I know for a fact. It was in Washington, D.C., and I saw Inception. Wow. What year are you Googling the I'm year? Googling it right now. What's the last movie you saw, Jess? Um, the first of the new Star Wars trilogy. So several years ago, but not that long. Okay, so I was uh, 2010, so nine years ago. So wow. I was in a movie theater. Hope, how about you? Do you see <laughs> movies in a theater? Yeah, I think I see three movies every month. What? Really? Mm -hmm. At the theater? Why? It's my favorite thing. <laughs> it's one thing if you love movies, but you love the theater? Like yeah. the experience? Yeah. Tell me about it. Why? I don't know, because you're going somewhere and it makes it more of an event and you get to watch it with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we covered this in a two kinds of people once. That there's people that clap at the end and people that don't. I'm one of those people. There, <laughs> Jess, there's a few things in this world I would rather do less than go to the movies. I'm with the you. The floor is sticky. <sighs> there's kids everywhere being so annoying. No, they're nice. They're like reclining chairs. No, no. the no, snacks there's... are like fifty bucks. Yeah, fifty dollars. You go to McDonald's and you put it in your purse and you walk. Whoa, away. hey, this, this, do you, hear, do you hear Jess? 
the government is listening to this podcast. You better be, be careful. <laughs> Don't tell them you're breaking the rules. And then also, then you walk in and they're like, oh, this girl smells like McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, McNugget's back. What movie are you watching this week? <laughs> No, keep oh, me away from the theater. No I don't way. Want it. I just want to have the ability to, to buy the movie, watch it when it comes out, in the convenience of my home, away from people, yes. away from claps, away from sticky floors, mm-hmm. and away from children. Nobody smells like McDonald's. You're in your pajamas, yeah. your own recliner that yeah. someone else didn't sit in and pass gas at the last movie. Ten years is too long. The last movie I saw was The Lion King. That was what, like 10 days ago? No, The Lion King, I think it was like 94. <laughs> I don't think she was even born yet. <laughs> no. Oh, but were, uh, were you born in 94 or no? No, 96. 96. Oh, wow. Oh, Gen Z. Okay. Open. Well, let's get back to the news because that was really depressing. Okay, so- hang on. Let me get my bifocals on <laughs> quick. <laughs> Take your arthritis medication. Okay. In case you missed the news back in February, Google has been planning to remove the average position metric from their Google Ads reporting. It's finally happening next month. They are going to begin sunsetting the metric, which is a nice way of saying, giving it the chop (laughs) on September 30th. They're getting rid of it. So we've said it before. We'll say it again. Focus on other competitive metrics and make sure you adjust your reporting and your clients' expectations accordingly. If you are a user of Microsoft Ads, the platform formerly known as Bing Ads, they announced, I think maybe a month ago or so, that they're keeping that metric. So unlike Google, they're keeping it. I love so, it. Yeah. You go Microsoft Rebels. Advertising. Absolutely. All right. And finally, another announcement from Google. <sighs> Optimization score now includes shopping campaigns. So, (laughs) exactly. Friends, your optimization score and recommendations help you prioritize the most impactful actions to improve your performance in your account. Did you say that? No, I didn't. (laughs) I mean, I said it. No, Google said that, and we don't agree. Can I go off on a tangent quick here? Please. Thank you. You're welcome. We were going through a pretty in depth audit for a client today, and they had a bunch of English ads and a bunch of French ads and different campaigns, and they took the English ads and targeted all languages. Hmm. It was a recommendation from Google. To do that? According according to the client. I believe it though. (laughs) (laughs) It's like these optimization scores, what percentage of optimization scores lead to Google making less money? I would go with zero. I would go with maybe 5% max. That's optimistic. That's nice. That's you being pessimistic yeah. by saying it's optimistic. Do you know that? Is it? Yes. Factually <laughs> correct. Mind blown. But anyway, just because you get these, opt- you don't just try to get a better optimization score. Try to optimize your account. Right. You're, because Especially because this optimization score is account wide and everything behaves differently. So if you're trying to get a hundred, anyway, if you care or you pay attention at all to this or to your recommendations, shopping campaign data is now included in that and you will be getting recommendations for shopping campaigns as well. So yeehaw. Great. Great. That's it <laughs> for paid. Lots more from Greg. Let's go into non-paid. All right. This week in non-paid, our first article is from Digiday and YouTube is testing new members features. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to read this quick. And I'm taking credit for all this, by the way. All just to it? let you know. Okay. Members only video option will allow publishers to upload the same videos available onto their YouTube channels without cannibalizing their subscription business. Essentially, you will be able to have a paid membership and get videos specific. And get it gets exclusive, not specific. The pricing tiers are going to be from $0.99 cents to $49.99 a month. Pew. And it will help publishers from having to discount their subscription rates for YouTube and enable them to set prices for YouTube because YouTube is taking a 30% cut of everything. Um, but the nice thing is, instead of trying to monetize really dumb ideas, they have a way to say, you want these videos, you have to become a member. And back, I think it was about a month ago at VidCon, they'd announced Super super Stickers. There were Super Stickers Facebook stars. Ugh, and yes. my, my request, my ask was, give us more features for adults. <laughs> and this is it. <laughs> that is what this you is said. This is an adult feature. Yeah. You can get access to all these videos and you pay for it. That's and great. And you don't pay for whatever it was, the Happy Cat or something. 
Oh, Bravo Cat. Bravo Cat. Hashtag to, Bravo Cat. Yes, you're not <laughs> paying 99 cents for a Bravo Kitty that you can send in a live chat. Nobody wants that. We want to say, sign up. I don't need a Patreon. You want to watch my videos? You pay for this channel. And that is what we got. So thank you, YouTube. Yeah. Do they? And you, thank you, me. Just yeah, to be really. Honest. I was going to say, do they me. like give you any? Are you part of that thirty percent cut that they're taking? You should be getting at least a penny. I should be getting thirty percent of thirty percent. I'll call them. Yeah, I'll put in the call and call a mathematician while you're at it too, <laughs> so we can figure out how that works. All right. Next up this week is Google My Business, and hotels can now add services and amenities. So if you've got some fancy pants things going on at your hotel that you want to show, please go for it. And I just have one request for all those folks i want this to happen you add this into your amenities and then you follow through everybody has to put in this amenity free wi-fi oh and then you just have to do it yeah i hate paying ten dollars for wi-fi at hotel yeah that's stupid and it's always the expensive hotels too where you do that like you're please it already costs enough to stay here yes so just do that and then Free Wi-Fi. That's what we want. (laughs) (laughs) Free Wi-Fi for all 2020. (laughs) All right. Next up from TechCrunch, Sarah Perez over at TechCrunch has an article called Twitter's latest test lets users subscribe to a tweet's replies. And what you're going to be able to do is if you like a thread in particular, you are going to be able to subscribe. If this test takes off and it turns permanent, you can then get notifications anytime Something goes on in the thread, even if you don't participate in it, which is nice. That's really nice. I was just thinking about this the other day. There was a thread started by Amalia Fowler about some issues with Google ad support. I did contribute a little bit. I think you contributed a little bit too. I did too. I I ranted. I always take the opportunity, as do you. (laughs) (laughs) But it was about issues with Google ads reps. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go back and check on it. But seeing the notifications here would be an amazing feature. Totally. This is the things that we want with Twitter. These are the things <laughs> that we want with Twitter, right? We want to be able to, to get more information. And there's more coming too later. I just blew up my spot on <laughs> one of the next stories here. <laughs> but again, great idea. I would love to use it. I want it for Amalia's post. Yeah, absolutely. want right. it for everything. Test is over. Let's just have it. Yes. Done. Done. Not really. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is an article from Daryl Etherington of TechCrunch called Snap Introduces Spectacles 3 with two HD cameras and 3D effects on Snapchat. Woo. Jess. Yeah. The spectacles now aren't going to have one camera. They have two. So you thought it was sweet having one? Super sweet with two. I mean, it's doubly as sweet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And what happens is it uses those cameras and kind of makes these weird 3D-ish effects. I don't think they're actually 3D effects if you look at the images that they make. Yeah. But again, it's if stark. you want to have really cool looking glasses and just cameras <laughs> around the front, it's pretty cool. Hope, hey, you're a Snapchat. You're a, you're a snappy folk over there. You're a snappy person over there. Do <laughs> Man, you, she says. <laughs> do you have spectacles? Do you know people that have spectacles? Yeah. You do? They're photographers. I don't know, so. Type. But like, get a camera then. Yeah, how I mean, about two cameras right in your face? Cool. <laughs> Fair enough. But I actually just deleted Snapchat. <gasps> oh wow! Whoa! Breaking news! Breaking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why did you delete Snapchat, Jen? This is new segment. <laughs> Pulse of Gen Z. <laughs> All right, Hope, why did you delete Snapchat? Um, I don't like the news section, or whatever you call it, because you can send pictures to your friends, but then you swipe, and it's all of these stories. And I don't know, you just look at the thumbnails, and they're so dumb. <laughs> I think we I think we broke her. Yes. I think we did. She sounds like us. I, <laughs> I don't want to waste my time reading. Look at this. She's going outside camping. Person. Right? We might promote you to millennial soon. Yeah. Next thing you know, she's only going to have one camera on her glasses. <laughs> what are we going to do? I don't do? know. I will say I like that it looks symmetrical. It, I appreciate. Nice. I appreciate that they look more like fashion glasses. Yes. <laughs> than technology glasses. Whatever. Fashion specs. 
All right, next up, Google is considering notifying webmasters for featured snippet penalties. There was a question asked on Twitter from Brian Feinstein at type underscore SEO, and he asked Danny Sullivan if you notify sites when a featured snippet has been removed. Danny said on his at Danny Sullivan Twitter handle, we don't as it's not a manual action against the page itself. It is something we're considering, though. There may be other ways to show eligibility for particular features. Now, Google's internal policies say they do remove feature snippets manually. It says from them, again, the internal policies, we also manually remove any reported featured snippets to be found in violation of our policies. So it's not technically a manual action. It is manually removing them, which is different it's a nomenclature thing but yeah it's an, an action done manually is different than a manual action correct so it will not make it in though maybe soon considering it something else that's being considered is a new youtube homepage. and according to the verge i'm just going to give it away right here <laughs> the title of the article is youtube test bigger thumbnails comma and people hate it Boom. Boom. You don't need to read anything. I looked at it, and I hated it, too. <laughs> it, looked, it looked like something that would be on for YouTube for TV. Yeah. If I got this on my Amazon TV, or whatever it's called, Fire TV, I would enjoy this. Sure. I actually really like the way that it displays on Amazon Fire TV. Yeah, I have it on Roku. A Roku? It's nice. That's what I have? Yeah, and it's the same thing. But it's nice and big, but you're sitting 10 million feet away. You're in yes. your living room. and so they took this... <laughs> Basically, big, big, big thumbnails that where you really can only see about eight things fully on the screen and put it on your desktop in what appears to be a test. Gross. People were not excited. <laughs> there was somebody <laughs> on Twitter that Cardboard Profile is the name, and he said, they said, and they said, this is not funny, YouTube. I'm sorry, but this is the worst update I've ever seen, and now homepage is just unusable. I can't look at thumbnails so big, my eyes are in pain right now. <laughs> You can't make everything gigantic because now everyone behind my back can see my homepage. <laughs> wow, what's this guy so worried First about? Off, why do you have so many people behind your back? Yeah, really. Everyone's just standing That's back weird. there. I don't like it when people are behind my back. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't even type. If you stood behind yeah. me and like, we're good. I'm not afraid of you. But like you stand behind yeah. me. I'm typing. I can't even so type my name. Cardboard profile. Turn around. Get a little <laughs> feng shui going. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the, maybe you'll enjoy it a little bit more. <laughs> but if you see this new homepage, don't panic. Ugh. It appears to be just a test. That people hate. Something that is not a test is a new native chat tool for Shopify on the e-commerce Goliath. <laughs> now, Shopify, there's a built-in native chat tool. Just what it's do you great. think the cost of this chat tool is? I didn't read the article, so I'm going to be optimistic to not be pessimistic. Free. Yes. Yeah. And that's Woo. what I love. Love. Love about Shopify. Love. They have really insane things that you have to upgrade to get, like Google Tag Manager. Mm. It's incredibly dumb that you have to be at a $2,000 a month level to get to Google Tag Manager. That's what it used to be. Now it's enterprise level, so there's no pricing. But you can get... This new chat tool, which is nice. That so, is nice. I like something I love free, free things. It's kind of the anti-HubSpot way to go about it. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, Twitter is testing a new way for users to follow and snooze specific topics. Again, also on TechCrunch from Lucas Metney. I love this idea. It seems to work very similar to Instagram, mm. where in Instagram you can follow hashtags. Yep. And Twitter is looking for ways for you to get into specific topics. I already see this when going to search.twitter.com and looking and showing you can um, perform a search and then you'll see some results there of things that are related to you on, on kind of the side or just even baked right in there. Um, and it's really usually helpful if you say, hey, here are other articles related to SEO and marketing. That's what I always get. And a lot of them are really good. So I use that a lot just to see these trends. If I could actually nice. subscribe to stuff, I would love it. And then if I could snooze stuff, oh. especially snooze stuff, that'd be great. <laughs> that would be great. Hey, politics. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Conor McGregor, snooze. Yes. He's trending right now. So overall, this seems like a great discovery method for people on Twitter. I love it. Don't snooze it. I follow it. Done. <laughs> All right. Google has also given us something else to follow 
their foray into indexing going wrong. There was an internal expose, maybe not expose. They I just shared that <laughs> that's yeah, <laughs> fancy words here. They wanted to share why there were so many issues lately. Thank and you. It, that's nice. It, it is very nice. It is a breath of fresh air. It actually humanizes everything. One of the big things <laughs> was one of the updates was rolled out on a Friday and it there were people on staff, but it didn't sound like it was as staffed up as it usually is. Mm. So some things didn't get, get caught. But they talk about the indexing issues, the search console issues, um, and they have a bunch of stats. And it's just a nice breakdown, and it shows that kind of humanity of everything. And I appreciate it. Thank you. We'd like more. No, no. We don't want more. We don't want more <laughs> articles about bugs no. because we don't want but more bugs. No. But we want more openness. Openness. Yeah, that's a nice way to put it. All right, and next up, Facebook has a new slideshow option for Facebook Stories in an attempt to boost usage. And this comes from Social Media Today. And there's a new option for your stories where you can choose a bunch of photos and it will turn into a slideshow for you so that you can make stories easier. Jess. Yes. Will you be using this feature? Um, no. <laughs> okay. Why not? <laughs> I don't use Facebook or Facebook stories. Okay. Well, I unfortunately, just, I won't be seeing your non-existent Facebook yeah, stories because me either. <laughs> it just seems like, remember when you could make a screensaver out of just all your pictures? You could probably still do that. But like, that was the thing in middle school. Like, you know what I mean? It just seems like a story version of that. Like, it's just I have, yeah, I have tastefully an animated. I have an analogy for you. Ooh, go for it. Hope in Gen Z is not using Snapchat as you and I and millennials are to not using Facebook. You know what I just learned? They came out with a new research for the millennial age gap. So technically, I'm actually a millennial now. What? No. 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 You're not in our group. Yeah. No. 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 Did they change the age that it starts at then? Like, did they move everybody back or did they just widen the range? It says born between. 1981 and 1996. I'm getting our stats department on this, and we'll have a resolution next week. The only way I could see that is if you somehow got a pass, you got a millennial card because you go to the movies um, 36 times a year. (laughs) That's the only thing. (laughs) That's the only way they gave you a pass. Yeah, that that doesn't seem... That's just too... That's that's what, 15 years? That's a long time. I'm just telling you the data. All right, I don't, I don't buy like it. it. Yeah. We're getting our stats team on it <laughs> next week. <laughs> All right, next up, Spotify is giving podcasters listener data that they can't get anywhere else. Woo. I saw this, Jess. I yeah. signed up for it. Of course you did. We have a podcast. Yes. I've got the listener data, though. <laughs> yeah. And it's time for quizzing Jess. Oh, gosh. About our podcast. Ours? Okay. Our podcast. This one here. Marketing and clock. That people are listening to right now. Critically acclaimed. But we are, yes. Governmentally listened to. <laughs> we can or cannot confirm that. Three potential millennials on a mic. <laughs> <laughs> what artists do people that listen to marketing and clock also listen to? Oh, wow. Um, this is just like a common one. Like our listeners have it in common. There are five artists. There are five. I'm going to name them. I'm going to guess them all. Um, I couldn't even name artists. Ariana Grande? Nope. <laughs> Taylor Swift? Nope. I'm just picking like popular people. Right. The Beatles? Nope. <laughs> I'm d- Is it my turn? Yeah. Yep. Like actual artists? <laughs> yes, actual artists. <laughs> We're doing terrible. Podcast. Okay. No, singing song folks. <laughs> singing songs. Billy Joel? Wow, Billy she thinks, Idol. She thinks so. You picked the it. wrong. Bill. I think it, your, your true colors are coming out <laughs> here. What you, what's going to be next here? Oh, I can park this. Oh. I don't know. I feel like a lot of thirty-year-olds are listening to our podcast. <laughs> wow. I don't know if we should take offense to that or I think, not. I think it's no. offense taken. Uh huh. Led Zeppelin? It's the demographics. Okay. I'm just going to... You guys are not anywhere near in the same vicinity. <laughs> We've been or across the board. Empire. How can we not be near it? Yeah. No. We have a, we have a very, very hip <laughs> set of listeners. We is do? it rap? There is some rap in there. Kanye West? No. LL okay. Cool J. Uh, I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Lil Pump? <laughs> no. All right. We're over. This, this was the worst idea I ever had. I love it. Ed Sheernan. Oh, 
I know one song by him. Ed okay. Sheeran. Sheeran. Yeah. Drake. Okay. Uh, I Go it? Raptors. Chance a rapper. Really? Um, this might be a misspelling. The Chain Smokers. Is that something? I think that's yeah. a band. Okay. Yeah. They're like techno. Khaled. Not DJ Khaled. Wow. Khaled. Our listeners are really hip. Yeah, they're really hip. They're hipper than you and I. <laughs> yeah, they're. Uh... Wow. All right, now the gender. Oh, I'm only looking over the last seven days. I'm going to go back. The last okay. 30 days here. All right. And gender of our listeners. Where, which way do we skew? Male or female? I'd say we skew female. Hope? Male? Hope's correct. <gasps> 57% male, 43% female. But if you break oh. it over a long period of time for some reason, we're like 49, 51. That makes more sense. I feel like it's pretty 50-50, like the world, you know? Yep. A lot of the information, <laughs> obviously, is only based off of Spotify. So if you see things like followers or listen mm, counts, it's only Spotify. That's true, but too. But you do get some really cool information. One of the things that I really enjoyed about this is that you can see the average listen. No podcast platforms do a good job at this that I've seen. If you're on Libsyn or Anchor or anything like that, you just see plays and you can just start that, and it counts as a play. Yeah, no. But you can see the average listen. And so our last episode was one hour and eight minutes long. The episode was, yes. yes. Okay. How long do you think people made it, Jess? <gasps> 57 minutes. Wow, that was very optimistic of you. <laughs> one hour and five minutes. What? Wow. It's crazy. So they just, oh, they didn't listen to shooting the heck then, I those mean, it's people. I it's a... It's a, I believe, a mm. kind of sum of everything. Okay. So you take the average, I'd yeah. imagine. All right. And then the episode before, I thought that that might just be like, hey, it's kind of messed up. Yeah. The episode before, how long? It was very, very similar. It was one hour and seventeen minutes. Our episode was getting too. <laughs> Those long episodes. I don't know if yeah. they're not long enough or too long, but listeners, tell us. One hour and seventeen minutes, and people listen for one hour and nine minutes. That's really good. That's really good. That's really yeah, we good. We got great listeners. Thank that's you. That's good. I like the music stuff is interesting and all that. That's just fun to know. But the that's a really good yeah. stat. That is helpful and to that's us podcast why you should creators. Check it out. Yeah. And also Pandora came out with something else too that is trying to. But I mean, <laughs> Poor I'm Pandora. a millennial here. I'm not a baby boomer, so I'm not that one that's our parents, right? Baby boomers, because my dad's yes. a Pandora fiend. See? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, all makes right. sense. He also uses Facebook. Probably not stories though. No, probably not stories. <laughs> I'm Friendster? No? Okay. What? Right, MySpace? Next up. <laughs> From Marketing Land and George Wynn, podcast listening growth continues. Mobile app usage is up 60% since January 2018. Study finds. And George did not report if this survey said it was directionally, causationally directed by the growth of marketing clock or not. <laughs> I think but it was. It seems I, like I it. feel like he didn't say it because he didn't have to. <laughs> yeah. I, well said. Well said, Jess. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting from the report itself was that 60% of folks uh, report looking up a product or service after hearing an ad. Mm. I think some of that is because podcasters typically sell better than folks that have been so jaded in doing something for a while. Um, and then 58% admit that they've skipped through a podcast ad. <gasps> Guess what? Folks on this show don't skip. They make it, they they make make it, it like 98% of the way through. It's amazing. Love our listeners. Yes. All right. And last up this week from the next web is the study shows that teens get the news from YouTubers and not news outlets. YouTubers are giving the news? According to the study, more than 75% of teens aged from 13 to 17 say it's important to keep up with world events, yet over half of them get the news from YouTube and other social media platforms, including Twitter and Facebook. Okay, Twitter, I feel That's like. Not, but yeah. Yes. And so I was like, I'm not even going to include this. But there was one other stat that made me include this. The study, which surveyed 1,000 teens, found that 60% learned the news from celebrities, influencers, and other online personalities. We're doomed. <laughs> We're doomed. Yeah. <laughs> We're doomed. <laughs> I mean, what does Dwayne The Rock Johnson think about I, current I events? I don't know. I, I'm just getting all my news from Cleo Kardashian. <laughs> Cleo! <laughs> 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 oh, 
That's so amazing. We're doing, folks. <laughs> All right. That's only a thousand teens. There's so many more out there, other teens. They need to talk to more children. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that brings us to our real life segment. Straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for working hard or hardly working where we talk about what is going on in our IRL work. Good. Bad. Or otherwise this week. Jess, what's been happening with your accounts lately? Well, it's time for my weekly check-in where I ask you whether or not you have the new Facebook ads interface. I do not. You do not. Okay. Well, (laughs) I'm sorry for you. Those of us that do are finding it to be a bit slow. Uh, a lot of people have complained about this, and I am complaining also. Sometimes it's just super slow. Sometimes it doesn't load at all. Several people in the office here, we've just like let things load in the background, and it takes hours, and things still don't show up. So I would say that that's hardly working, but a hack, which hopefully our listeners are savvy enough to have figured out, but if not, the easiest thing to do is just revert to the old interface and things load fairly quickly. So I had an ad set in particular that I was trying to edit. I needed to edit the targeting. I was able to edit everything else in the entire campaign except this one ad set. It was just a white, it wasn't even trying to load. It was just white screen, nothing. And I said, you know, after a couple of tries, I said, heck it, I'm going to switch to the old interface, even though I've been trying not to do that. And everything loaded and everything worked and it published still not quickly, but quicker than the new interface has been working. So, you know, just a, a hack for folks that are trying to embrace new things. Maybe we're just not ready yet. Go back to the old Facebook ads interface if you're having issues. All what right. about you? All right. And so I have something working hard this week and I recently had an issue. I was trying to problem shoot, not on our end, on our client's end, uh, with Facebook ads. Hmm. And I use the Facebook chat support. You can go to, we'll put it in the show notes. You can click through, you can go right into Messenger. And it's usually pretty snappy to get somebody uh, talking through Messenger. It was so helpful. Really? Really. You're not being sarcastic. This is two out of two times. And I just want to give credit where credit is due. Yeah. I didn't even get the problem resolved because it was on the client end and and we haven't gotten that figured out yet because of some technical issues, but the support was incredibly better than Google ad support. Wow. And I just want to take this moment saying, even though I didn't get the problem resolved, having somebody that knew what was happening that could address the problem and tell me what I need to tell the client to do to get it fixed because I wasn't admin on this, I was a partner was incredible. That's huge. Yes. For someone even just to know what's up, but for you to be, I'm going to use the word satisfied for you to be satisfied without even having a resolution. This person must have been awesome. It's just been two out of two, I think. And maybe it's just a small sample size, but I just want to say thank you, Facebook support. That's lovely. All right. And now it's time for this week's WTH. And this week's WTH comes from social media today. The name of the article is new listing shows just how much celebrities are being paid per sponsored Instagram post. Mm. I think this is misleading first off, but that's what the name of the article is. (laughs) And so there is a site out there that is called Hopper, not the Hopper that Shep likes or whatever that's called. Hopper, the guy from Stranger Things? No, the flight thing. Oh, that's also called Hopper. I think so. Yeah, not that. Not that. This Hopper, I will find the domain for you quick. It's called HopperHQ.com. And they have the Instagram rich list of 2019, where you can see what it might cost per post if you were to have a sponsored post. Kylie Jenner is number one. And the estimate is if you want Kylie Jenner to post an Instagram sponsored post, it would be $1,266,000. That's a stupid amount of money. Yes. And I don't mean like... Somebody called the authorities. (laughs) You can't even say this. (laughs) That's like, that's insane. Yes. And then it goes down. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who you mentioned earlier, would be $882,000. So I was reading the article, and they said that there was research done. Hopper conducted research on exactly what it would cost to get a sponsored post on the feeds of a range of well-known Insta users. So I don't know about this, but Jess, I am going to 
do a rundown with you. Okay. First, our first ever marking clock rundown. Should I not have this open? Should I not cheat? You can't cheat. Okay. I, I made this cheat proof. We're going to go through the Instagram rich list of lifestyle people. Oh, you have a life. Perfect. You have style. You should know these. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go through the top lifestyle folks on Instagram. You tell me to stop when you've heard of somebody. Okay. Eleonora Pons, Huda Ketten, Cameron Dallas, Somer Ray, Zach King, Felix Kylberg. Is that, wait, is that PewDiePie? Yes. I know him. Okay. I've heard of him from South Park. So all of those were over $70,000 to get a sponsored Instagram post. Well, I've never even heard of them. Yes. And <laughs> I, the tops was Eleonora, who that? was 144000 I'd like to survey 1,000 teenagers and see if they get their news from any of these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently, Eleonora is a YouTuber, an actress, and a singer. And I mean, she might as well change it away from YouTuber and be an Insta-er. I mean, because if yeah. you're making one hundred forty-four thousand dollars per post, I mean, if you're, you're an, an actress and a singer, though, you don't need to start your resume with YouTuber. So she's not an actress. Or she might be aspiring in those fields. Okay, right. Well, shots to be fair. fired. Well, whatever. She's making seventy thousand dollars on a post. I am so jealous because I wish people would look. You know what my last Instagram post was? It a was blurry a disaster. pizza. A blurry pizza. I yeah. know what you're posting. Where's my money? I post great content. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I just runner up, and I don't think you've looked at this, and I don't think you know this, but back in the day, I believe it was 2013, 2013, Yahoo had purchased Tumblr, mm. the price they paid, $1.1 billion. Billion? Billion with a B. You know how many Kylie Capital Jenner posts B. you could get for that? You could get like, like 10. 90. <laughs> That's a lot of Kylie Jenner posts. <laughs> so it was just sold to Automatic from Verizon, who bought Yahoo, who then owned Tumblr, and they sold it to Automatic. So we're six years later. Mm. How much do you think they sold Tumblr for? So it was what one point one billion. Yes. I mean, Tumblr is not. No one talks about it anymore. I'm gonna go half. Half of that. So five hundred million. Sure. Yeah. Less than three million dollars. That's so sad. W T H. I mean, it's a good deal for who just bought it. Automatic. The, Automatic. It's a good deal for them. Company of WooCommerce. <laughs> yeah, that's now and uh, obviously. Wow. WordPress. This is this this is the internet. Six years later, things have dropped that much in value. It just blows my mind. I mean, not, not everything is dropping in value. Most <laughs> things are going up in value. All right. Not Tumblr. Poor Tumblr. Aw. All right. That brings us to this week's Cool Tool. As a reminder, our Cool Tool segment is not an official endorsement or a paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners. And this week's Cool Tool is Buffer's Hashtag Manager. Not hashtag like the symbol and then manager, but Hashtag manager. It is a manager of hashtags. Hashtag MBA. Hashtag manager. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag YouTuber, actress, singer, whatever. So in order to use this tool, you have to have a premium or business subscription to Buffer. But if that's you, take advantage because the composer now lets you create and save groups of hashtags that you can reapply to future Instagram posts easily, which is really nice because I know a lot of us folks are just saving lists and copy pasting things or trying to remember them next time and retyping them. So again, if you are a premium or business member of Buffer, you no longer have to do that. The other cool thing that this tool does is it has a feature that lets you schedule the hashtags as a comment on your post. So it'll show up as the first comment instead of part of the actual caption, which is a thing that a lot of people are doing. So if that's your thing, this lets you do it. If I was in charge of Buffer, I would append hashtag comment in every comment. Hashtag comment? Yeah, just to be funny. Why not? I'm going to start doing it on my posts. <laughs> <Hashtag> just to <comment>. see. <laughs> hashtag what's next. Greg? One other piece of news, just on Buffer, they launched yeah. two other services within this past week called Reply and Analyze. So they kind of split things up a little bit, and Buffer does great stuff. So check it out if you're looking for a better way to reply to stuff or take a look at how things are doing. So thank hashtag you. Hashtag reply. Thank you, Buffer. Hashtag <laughs> new things. <laughs> All right, and now for this week's must-read marketing article of the week, an article so in-depth, so detailed, that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. And this week's article comes from Adam Steele from Loganex. 
Loganix? Loganix. And the name of the article is The Secret to Ranking in Local Search, Ranking in Organic Search. It gives it away a little bit there. But they did a study across 30 different cities of varying sizes across the U.S. and Canada. Just shy of a thousand unique queries run. And the primary goal was to determine whether or not there's a link between local ranking and organic ranking. And this was done really well. He broke down the tech stack that they used and then pulled out different correlations, local versus organic ranking correlations, ratings and reviews, and pulled together the overall analysis as to what in this kind of small sample size study they did, what actually mattered. And it was just a very nice look and, and how you should do blog posts and how you should do even small little you know case studies. So thank you, Adam. All right, and that does it for today's show. It is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. Remember, you can catch everything from the show on marketingoclock.com. While you're there, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And we will see you next week.